Hi everyone, welcome back. So after looking at the different processes that happen in the innate immune response, now we're going to happen to see what happens in the adaptive immune response, what is going to happen after the innate immune response. Okay, so you remember that uh, thanks to the process of the endocytosis by the neutrophils, uh, we have like so free antigens. And also, uh, thanks to the neutrophils, uh, because the neutrophils, they secrete all the cytokines and they are going to recruit the macrophages. The macrophages, they are also going to endocytose uh, the microorganisms, but uh, they are not going to secrete free antigens. They are going to show the antigens of the microorganisms in their membrane, in a major histocompatibility pro uh, complex type 2. Okay, so these uh, free antigens uh, and also the macrophages, they are going to be distributed through our body and they are going to arrive to the lymph nodes. So the lymph node, and we are not looking in detail in this video into uh, the lymphatic system. Uh, so the lymph node uh, can be found, for example, in our spleen. Uh, it can also be found in our tonsils uh, and also in the lining of uh, different systems, for example, in the lining of uh, our uh, intestines and also in the lining of our respiratory system. So uh, these are going to, uh, they are going to travel uh, to uh, the, lymph, the lymph nodes and everything is going to happen during the lymph nodes in comparison to uh, the innate immune system which happens more or less locally, okay? So most of the stuff that we are going to look in the second part of the video in the adaptive immune response uh, is going to happen in the lymph nodes. Okay. So uh, we have uh, different processes. Uh, so we have the free antigens. So the free antigens, they are going to be recognized uh, by the B cells. So these B cells, uh, before they recognize uh, the free antigens, they are going to be naive B cells. And then once they recognize, uh, they are going to change their gene expression and they are going to, be, to become activated B cells. and they're activated B cells because the free antigen binds to the antigen receptor in the activated B cell membrane. Okay, so at the same time, we have uh, the, neutro uh, the macrophages and the macrophages, uh, they are going to express the antigen in the major histocompatibility complex uh, type two. And these are going to be recognized by other type of adaptive immune cells, which are the T cells. In this case, they are going to be recognized by the helper T cells. Okay, so these helper T cells, they are uh, by binding to the antigen in the macrophages, they are going to be activated. and they are going to secrete a lot of cytokines that are then they are going to uh, have a reaction on the activated B cells. So first, the cytokines, for example, interliquin 2, are going to uh, 
make the cells, the activated B cells, to expand. So we have the process of expansion. And in this process of clonal expansion, we are going to add this, uh, activated B cells. They are uh, going to proliferate in really high numbers. And also, the cytokines after uh, the clonal expansion, they are going to mediate in another process, which is the process of differentiation. So through this process of differentiation, the uh, B cells are going to differentiate into two different types of cells. They are going to differentiate into our plasma cells. So the plasma cells are really important because they are going to be the cells that are going to secrete the antibodies. And also, we are going to have another uh, type of differentiated B cells, which are going to be the memory B cells. Okay, so now after uh, we have the antibodies, uh, then uh, these antibodies, they are going to very specifically target uh, the bacteria, uh, so the initial microorganisms that enter in our body uh, through the wound. Um, so this, uh, uh, these antibodies, they are going to bind to the bacteria, very specifically to the antigens of the bacteria, and uh, they are going to neutralize They are also going to uh, uh, do the process of precipitation. and also the process of lysis of the microorganism that they target. So this is why this process is very specific, because it's uh, antigen mediated, and then we have these very specific antibodies that are going to specifically target the antigen in the microorganisms uh, for their neutralization, precipitation, and lysis. Okay, cool. So this is uh, more or less the end, but we only have seen what happens when we have a microorganism invading our body like a bacteria. So I just focus in the bacteria. So now I'm going to uh, tell you what happens when we have a virus or a cancer cell in our body. So give me a sec and I'll be right back. Hello everyone and welcome again to my immune system lecture. Uh, so previously we have looked at the adaptive and also the innate immune responses, but only on the context of a bacterial infection or a fungal infection. Uh, but when there are viruses inviting our body, they are pretty different. So we are going to focus right now on the uh, innate and adaptive immune response that happen in uh, response to a virus. So let's say that we're in class and we have a student that is sick with COVID. Uh, that uh, they don't know uh, that they have COVID, right? And they start talking or sneezing. So some viruses are going to enter our organism. So these viruses, uh, they are going to uh, bind uh, to uh, the cell surface. So in the case of the innate immune response, when these viruses they bind to the macrophages, these macrophages they are going to start secreting a very important uh, cytokine or a very important protein uh, that is called interferon.
So the interferon is going to have uh, two different types of effects. Uh, the interferon is going to uh, target directly uh, the viruses, so they are going to uh, kill the viruses and also is going to uh, bind directly to uh, the cell uh, through uh, receptors in the cell membrane and these are going to um, uh, tell the cell to start uh, stopping the replication of the virus. So these interferons, they have two effects, they have direct effects over the virus and also on the cells to commit apoptosis and also on the cells themselves to uh, stop the replication process of the virus. Uh, but, uh, and this is what happens in the innate immune system, but we also have what happens in the adaptive immune system. So in the previous case, uh, we saw uh, that when a bacteria is present, we have a, a response uh, that is mediated by antibodies. So in the previous case, when it's a bacteria, we have the antibodies, and this is called the humoral response. But uh, when we have a virus, we don't have uh, this antibody response, we don't have this humoral response, we have a cell mediator response. Okay. So we don't have antibodies, it's going to be cell mediated and the cells that are going to mediate the response are uh, the uh, cytotoxic T cells. Okay. So what is going to happen in this case is that uh, we have uh, our cell, and we have the virus that infects the cell. So the cell is going to express the antigens of the virus in their major histocompatibility complex one. So knowing the two as uh, the macrophages in the, um, uh, in, the, in the bacterial infection, but in this case, uh, the antigen is going to show in the major histocompatibility complex type one. So this antigen that is going to be show in the membrane of the infected cells, then is going to be uh, recognized by the uh, cytotoxic T cells. which are going to mediate in the process of cell, of infected cell apoptosis. Okay, so I think that we are done uh, with uh, the um, innate response for bacteria, the adaptive response for bacteria, and also explaining the differences of response between bacteria and viruses. I'll uh, see you next week for another different lecture. I hope that you enjoyed this lecture. Uh, see you, thank you.